Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today, looking at some of the dev responses and information from Spectrum, the Star Citizen forums on gas cloud tech, RTX support, and server tick rates. There was a Spectrum thread by TBSTR titled Different Tick Rates in Different Places with Server Meshing. So as I understand, if server meshing all goes to plan, then you'll be able to segregate servers based on areas in game, like a planet or building. It posed three questions that were answered by CIG's Clive Johnson. Are server ticks linked to the client inputs, like Valve's games, for instance? No, the servers run the simulation as fast as they can, up to a maximum of 30 frames per second. The packet rate sent by a server is determined by its frame rate and how many entities are updated and have new data sent to the clients. Neither the frame rate of a client or the frame rate at which it sends packets to the server have any influence on that. Will the AI be improved with a higher tick rate? AI logic is entirely run on the servers and the higher a server's frame rate, the faster the AI think is leading to quicker reaction times. Their ability to plan ahead isn't really affected by frame rate, though so faster frames won't make them smarter. Some recent bugs with the AI have been due to desync issues, where what you see on the client no longer reflects what they're doing on the server. Good old fashioned bug fixing and continuing to flesh out the AI systems are where the improvements will come from. Is it possible to have a higher tick rate server in places with a concentrated amount of FPS combat on a planet's surface or in a bunker, for instance? Yes, it would be possible, but this is not something we're currently considering. Running a server at a higher frame rate means it can't update as many players and other entities. Since servers cost money to run, we want them to simulate as many entities and players as possible. The final version of server meshing should allow us to balance the load between multiple servers so that we can maintain a consistent frame rate on all of them. Concentrated FPS combat in a bunker between a fairly large number of players may warrant that bunker being given its own server. The same number of players spread out over the surface of a moon may mean that the entire moon can be simulated at the same frame rate just by one server. I thought that was an interesting little thread there. It's nice to know that they're planning not to go above 30 ticks on their servers. That's sort of like what they're optimizing them to for um, all of their optimizations. They're just trying to get as many players now on as possible on each individual server, because that's basically going to be uh, the bottleneck when it comes to server meshing. How many players can you get into a single small room that a single server will run? Uh, NVIDIA's ray tracing and RTX tech has been talked about by CIG before, mainly them sort of saying that they'd use it if it was sensible for them, as they will with most tech, but at the moment it doesn't look worthwhile for them to integrate at this stage anyway. And more recently in regard to RTX, there was a thread by Blue Dirk asking, do you believe that RTX tech will save devs much work? further along and look absolutely spanking. Uh, ben Parry answered, not in the slightest. I expect if we use it, it'll be a massive headache and time sink, but might give us some subtle improvements in looks or performance if we get it right. Um, so it does sound like they're still not really interested in the RTX stuff. The thread continued, do you plan to try it or make some research anyway? Uh, ben replied, I'd love to, it looks fun, but at the moment we have other high priority tasks on the roadmap. There were some more replies, I assumed it would be less work due to the whole add a light and voila, no need for environmental lighting thing. Ben again said that it's more likely to be a case of we've got a test bed scene for ray tracing based environment lighting techniques. It works for one type of light so far. Here's a list of things that you can no longer safely have in a room without it breaking with rough possibilities of how likely we are to work out a solution. The added headache is that whatever we offered would have to be an as well feature rather than an instead feature. 
Developing a feature for a single manufacturer's top end cards means also maintaining feature parity for everyone else's hardware. Ben said that he'd personally like to use it to make shadows crispier. He then went on to say, by as well, I meant we'd have to maintain support for two modes. A mode that uses ray tracing, though probably not exclusively, in some way to get its results, and a mode that doesn't use ray tracing but can achieve a similar look without changing the art assets or lighting setup. As an example, when we ported over the voxel fog, we intended it to be an as well feature because it's expensive to run, but eventually ran with it as an instead feature because it interprets the fog parameters totally differently and drastically changes what does and doesn't work in terms of light placement. Another question posed to Ben on the same thread was, to your knowledge, is there anything promising on the horizon, even in the distant horizon, when it comes to providing high quality perspective correct reflections in games, in scenes with large numbers of reflective surfaces and moving objects and without the limitations of screen space reflections aside from ray tracing? He replied, indeed not. That's one of the improvements in looks that we'd expect to get out of it. The headache part is writing all the management code that would be needed, e.g. to calculate lighting, shadowing on objects that aren't seen on screen. Ben was also asked to respond to an article that stated Star Citizen's development had already passed the point of adding whole new graphical technologies. Ben in reply said, I think the author might have jumped the gun a little, especially in saying that the writing is on the wall for NVIDIA just because one dev on a project already deep in development thinks it'll be hard work to retrofit brand new tech that doesn't yet have a broad install base. Ray tracing is probably great and I'd love to work on something with it. It's just unfortunate that we've got a lot of rather mundane tasks and hopefully some less mundane ones that we need to complete for the game to work as intended. Also, in regard to gas cloud tech being moved off or obscured from the uh, schedule and uh, roadmap for the Persistent Universe, Ben said, I'm currently working on gas cloud tech, though to be clear, this is just the underlying tech side of it. We're using it for Squadron 42. Obviously, it doesn't cover any particular usage of it in the Persistent Universe, though we do intend to use it, and it's not intended to be used for weather or planetary clouds. So anything to do with them isn't affected by its schedule. Fog and weather are definitely not something we're trying to handle via the gas cloud system. Crusader may layer it in if it's useful, though that would mean adding extra features that it doesn't otherwise need. Currently on the Squadron 42 roadmap for completion Q4 2019 is Gas Cloud VFX improvements, implementing a series of improvements to Gas Cloud Tech VFX, expanding on the existing data driven system to allow effects to visually reflect the conditions of the Gas Cloud. This will also build out the tool set to allow artists and designers to dynamically control these effects. It remains to be seen what of Gas Cloud Tech or improvements to it will make it into the Persistent Universe this year though. We do know that weather's being worked on in the Frankfurt studio, but we have no idea uh, how far it is down the line, but obviously it isn't affected by that sort of gas cloud tech that they're working on separately, and also the gas cloud tech that they're gonna be using for Crusader, although it might be related to the gas cloud tech that they've got for Squadron 42 planned. Uh, it's not exactly the same and needs more work to get into the game. Every month we have a Star Citizen ship giveaway for February. It's for a Cutlass Black and Star Citizen game package all you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on any of my videos made during the month if you don't have a gaming pc yet or you are upgrading instead consider shadow cloud gaming they allow you to leverage the powers of the internet to stream a high spec windows 10 environment to any other pc mac or device like a smartphone or tablet it is working really well in star citizens 3.4 branch and be sure to use the code board gamer if you do decide to check it out to get a discount links below this channel exists because of its community. If you wish to support the channel further, below there are links to Patreon, Subscribestar, and there's the YouTube channel memberships, literally the join button below this video. VIPs do get some exclusive stuff and early content as a thank you as well. If you have any feedback, suggestions, or just want to say hi, please drop a comment below or poke me on discord.gg forward slash boardgamer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.